You're tuned in to Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart.
towards us. Amen. We praise and thank God that our air-conditioned, brand new air-conditioning system is up and running. Come on, let's give God praise in the house. I thought I'd see some folks running down the aisle about now. Glory be to God. Amen. We went all summer. Amen. With due diligence, praising and magnifying the name of the Lord in the heat. Amen. We didn't let that stop us, but it feels good to feel the wind blowing and Amen. The air flowing when we praise and thank God for our brand new, amen, air conditioning system throughout the entire church. Uh, ventilation systems, all brand new, suctioning air in, pushing air out. Amen. State of the art, 21st century. Amen. Over a million dollar. Amen. Uh, air conditioning system. What a mighty God we serve, aren't we? Come on, we ought to give God praise. Every church can't do this, but praise and thank God for you and your faithful giving and your commitment. Come on, we can do better than that. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. I don't know about you, but I am excited. I'm excited about what God is doing at Refuge Temple. Amen. We praise and thank God for your faithful giving. It is your tithing. It is your support and all the things that you are doing to help the Greater Refuge Temple continue to keep the work of the Lord flowing here in this house. And we praise and thank God for uh, each and every one of you and your continuous commitment. For, so for those of you who have been waiting, amen, to come back to church for the air. Amen. God bless you. You can come on back. Amen. The air is working. Amen. And uh, everything is cool now. Amen. No pun intended. Glory be to God. But we praise and thank God for his goodness and mercy towards oh, yes, us and the consistency yes, yes, yes. of each and every one of you, our security team, our nurses, our praise and worship team, our musicians, our technicians, the deacons, the missionaries, the preachers, all of you and your consistency. Amen. Uh, with air or without air, but we praise and thank God. Uh, we are in a good place now, a good condition now, and we praise and thank God for it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, we want you to know that the Greater Refuge Temple, your church family, is continuing to pray for each and every one of you, those who are joining us by our live stream. But most importantly, certainly all of you who are here today. Uh, we've been praying for you. We're praying for those, amen, who are on their way back to school or who have already gone back to school. We know that New York City will be going back to school this coming week. And we're praying for all of the children who are going back to school and those who have already gone back to school. Many of our college students have already left and we've said a special prayer over them. But we're praying that God keep things, amen, uh, in the palm of his hand. And we know that God is watching out for our children. Regardless of what the coronavirus does, regardless of what the Delta variant or any other variant does, we know that God is in full control and the Lord will protect that which is concerning us. The Lord will keep it Amen. Everything that concerns us so the coronavirus cannot beat the blood of Jesus Christ that we have posted on the door. I wish I had some witnesses in here. Oh, glory be to God. I wish I was in a good old apostolic church on this morning. I said the blood prevails. I don't care what this virus is doing. Jesus Christ is real and he's on the throne. And so we're going to go before the Lord in prayer and we're going to ask amen uh, uh, that you would stand with us as we go before the Lord in prayer. Elder Kevin Dickerson will lead us in prayer, which will be followed by uh, our scripture reading coming from District Elder Michael Dickerson in the name of Jesus Christ. Let Jesus fix it for you. Yes, for he knows just what to do. Yes. Whenever you pray, whenever you pray, y'all may not remember that, but just let him have his way. No matter what the problem is, no matter what the problem is, let Jesus fix it for you. Do you hear me over the airways? Let Jesus. Oh yes, Lord, let him fix it for you. Fix it 
the miracle do you believe that on today I said those who pray can expect a miracle let your heart pray right now Lord Jesus Lord Jesus Lord Jesus we thank you Lord God for waking us up today we thank you for giving us the right mind and the right spirit. But God, we come humbly to your throne today, asking for you to forgive us for all our sins, all our shortcomings, everything that we have said or done that was not likened to your word and to your will. Lord, we need forgiveness today. Have mercy on us today. Have mercy on us today. Oh God, we thank you, Lord, for giving us your son, Jesus Christ. Oh, for shedding his blood, Lord God. Oh God, we ask you right now, wash us in your blood. Cleanse us in your blood, Jesus. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we come to you, Lord God, seeking your face. Oh God, there's so much turmoil in the world today. So much pain and suffering. But God, you have all the answers, Lord Jesus. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done, Lord God. Watch, Lord God. Touch, Lord God. Cover, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we call on your name today. Because your name is a strong tower. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Demons flee when we call on your name. Jesus, Jesus. Yokes be destroyed when we call on your name. Lord, we thank you right now. Oh, God, we bind the hand of the enemy today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, so many people sick today. Oh, God, sick with COVID. Sick with stress. Sick with fear. Sick with, oh, God, cancer, Lord God. But God, you said by your strength, we are healed today. We call on your name for your healing today. We call on your name, Lord God. Send forth your healing. Oh, God, look into the hospital room. Oh, by the bedside, those who are afflicted in their bed, Lord God. Those who are in their home, Lord God. Oh, God, can't get up out of their bed because COVID-19. But God, you said you are a healer. Heal today, Lord God. Deliver today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, let your blood of them say in your hold over God's people today in the name of Jesus. Oh God, send forth a spirit of healing across the land. Oh God, stretch forth your hand, Lord God. Look at those who are watching on Facebook, Lord. Those who are watching my YouTube. Oh God, uh, somebody crying out today uh, in pain and suffering. But God, you are. Oh God, heal all thy diseases today. Oh God, we ask you, Lord. Uh, the rain of blessing. Send forth the rain of blessing. Send forth the rain today, Lord God. Oh God, look upon, Lord God, those, Lord God, that lost their loved ones. In the, oh God, when the hurricane came through, Ida came through, look upon those who lost their lives in the car, oh God, in the car, oh God, oh God, oh God, in the earthquakes, Lord. Huh? Oh God, look upon those huh, who lost their love in the fire, Lord. Huh? Oh God, now, 
in the name of Jesus. We bind up everything that's not right today. In the name of Jesus, let your blood prevail right now. Oh God, look upon those in Congress, Lord. Oh God, touch the hearts and minds who makes a decision across the land, Lord God. Oh God, we ask you right now. In the name of Jesus, let your blood prevail. Oh God, send forth the rain. Oh God, a special anointed today. Oh, touch your pastor. Oh, touch the choir today. Oh God, from the pulpit to the door, we bleed your blood. Jesus, let your will be done. Jesus, have your way. Oh God, though we walk through valleys of death, Lord, you're there with us right now. Oh God, Lord, let your blood be them. I speak deliverance on today. I speak healing on today. Let your will be done. Sit forth your word with fire. Oh God. Oh God. So many people have died, Lord. Out of sin, Lord. But God, save the day, Lord. Deliver today. Oh, somebody get saved today. Somebody hear the word today. Get healed by the word. Get delivered by the word. Oh God, we thank you right now. We plead your blood. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let your will be done. We'll give you the glory today. We'll give you the hang. We'll give you a lift of hand up. We'll give you the honor. Oh God, we speak healing. Let your will be done. Look upon those that's in the concentrated today. Oh God, they may be watching. Oh God, break the chain. Destroy the enemy. Lord, have your way. I bind up witchcraft. I bind up Santa Maria. I bind up every wall in the name of Jesus, Lord, let your will be clear. Let your will be done. Lord, we give you the honor. Do it for us, Lord. Do it right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody give God the praise. Somebody give him the praise this morning. Oh, until we said it shall be done. In the name of Jesus, we shall be free. We shall be in the name of Jesus, every pain, every yoke will be destroyed today. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your blood be there. We thank you today. We bless your name right now. In the name of Jesus, your will shall be done. Come on, walk here. In the name of Jesus, oh glory to His wonderful name. Come on, say, give God some praise in heaven. Give Him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Oh, yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our scripture reading takes place, and I believe that when scriptures... When a minister reads a scripture, he should read a scripture for the edification and motivation and strengthening to the children of God. I believe this scripture will bless you today. Mark, the fourth chapter. The Lord spoke to me to read this scripture because someone, I don't know who it is, needs this particular scripture this morning. Mark, the fourth chapter and 35th verse, it reads as this. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were other boats with him. A furious storm came up. And the winds and the waves began to break the boat so nearly the boat would be swamped. Has anybody ever felt your boat was going to be swamped? Jesus was in the back of the boat sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said, Master, carry us down now that we perish. He got up, looked at the winds, looked at the waves and said, peace. Be still. Peace. Be still.
be still. The winds died and there was a complete calm. And the disciples said to one another, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to make it in this life because I got that man. Yes, Lord. Our scripture reading. Come on, somebody just say peace. Come on, somebody say peace. I don't know who needs to hear that, but I know I need to hear that. Peace be still. Come on, somebody say it one more time. Say peace. Declare it on today. Say peace. How many know he'll calm the storms when you need to be calmed? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Come on, one more time. Somebody just say peace. I speak, I, I speak peace in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I really love you. I really love you. Peace be still, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for that scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody just love the Lord on this morning? Come on, anybody just love the Lord on this morning? Come on, if you love them, come on, just put your hands together right there. Come on, I need everybody, come on, put your hands together. The song says, I really love you. I really love you. Because you first loved me. Because you first love me. Because you first love me. 
So why? Because you first loved me. You loved me when I was unlovable. You loved me when nobody else loved me. Amen. Isn't it amazing how people can hate your guts over, amen, a rumor, and God knows all the filthy truth about you and still loves you anyway? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, hallelujah. That's why I love him because he loves me and we certainly do praise and thank God for that beautiful amen certainly uh, uh, wonderful words coming from our praise and worship team let's celebrate our praise and worship team for the awesome job they have been doing amen for almost the last two years this praise and worship team or some variation of them have been doing an outstanding job and I want you to celebrate amen minister Ernest Billups come on put your hands together he has been doing And the, our very only Dr. Jennifer McCarroll Johnson, come on. For over 60 years, she has been a tremendous blessing to this great church, doing a fine job, and we praise and thank God for her. Amen. And all of the musicians who have been doing a stellar job as well. And we praise and thank God for them. Amen. We praise and thank God for uh, the work that is being done through many of our auxiliaries who do an outstanding job week by week. Amen. Uh, continuing to serve this great church. And among those is our missionary department. Our missionary department uh, who is uh, leading the way in our women's ministry along with our sisterhood and women's council. And our missionary uh, uh, have been doing a stellar job uh, meeting uh, weekly, praying, and amen, doing the work that they have been called to do. And as many of you know, last year we lost our very precious mother, Dorothy Anderson, who went home to be with the Lord. 
Amen. Uh, well, we didn't lose her. We know exactly where she's at. Amen. She's resting in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Waiting for that great day. Amen. And we celebrate her. But amen. Uh, throughout that time, the Lord has blessed us with talented women, vice presidents, and others who have been helping to lead and serve. And recently, our pastor, amen, uh, along with amen, myself and others, amen, uh, felt Amen. The uh, awesome responsibility and the mantle fell on our missionary, new missionary president. Amen. Missionary Janice Johnson. Come on, y'all can do better than that, Refuge Temple. She's a daughter of the house, a daughter of this great church of our Lord Jesus Christ and doing a stellar job. Amen. So far at this time, she's going to come and give a special presentation at this time. Receive at this time our missionary president, Missionary Janice Johnson. We honor the spirit of the Lord who is the head of our, of our life. We honor our pastor, Bishop Charles Wright Sr. We honor our assistant pastor, Bishop William Wilkins Jr. We honor the ministerial staff, the deacons, and all those to whom honor is due. Today, we are given the honor of presenting a special tribute to one of our missionaries. She is coming up slowly, and I'm going to introduce her to you at this time, Missionary Emily Peterson. Missionary Emily Peterson. Missionary, Missionary Peterson was introduced to the missionary department by our founder, Bishop R.C. Lawson, as a junior missionary over 60 years ago. And down through the years, Missionary Peterson has served the missionary board with diligence. And today, with the, with the recommendation of our pastor, the International Missionary Department is bestowing special honor to missionary Emily Peterson. We honor missionary Emily Peterson, who is now honored by the International Missionary Department as an honored mother. We thank God for missionary Peterson and for over 60 years, some people have, were not even born when she was a missionary in the, in the missionary department of the Greater Refuge Temple. And we honor her today. Praise God. We honor missionary Emily Peterson. And special honor has also been given to missionary Clara Williams and the missionary Lucille Walker. They are not here, but we honor them today, and their cards will be, will be delivered to them at a later date. But in our presence, while she can smell her own flowers, is missionary Emily Peterson. May the Lord bless her, and to all the missionaries and to all those, work on while it's day, for the night cometh when no man shall be able to work. There's a blessing and there's a crown awaiting you as you walk on in the service of the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you, Missionary Johnson. We praise and thank God for you and certainly your leadership. And we certainly do praise and thank God for Mother Peterson, a man who has been honored by the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what a certainly befitting honor, a man to a wonderful woman of God who... Amen. Uh, I have known pretty much all, I think all of my life. Amen. And we praise and thank God for her and the work of the Lord that the Lord has called her to do. Amen. We praise and thank God, not just for Mother Peterson, but all of you who make Refuge Temple what it is. We, amen, are a part of a great church. 
Amen. We are a part of not just a great church, but a great institution. Come on here, somebody. And it is so easy to talk about what other folks are doing and how great other people are. Amen. Uh, but uh, the grass always looks green on the other side. Amen. Refuge Temple, amen, is a great church, a great institution that the Lord has kept us for over a hundred years. And we're celebrating our 102nd church year. And we can be proud. And I certainly know, amen, that that great cloud of witnesses that have gone on before us are cheering us on as we continue, amen, to press our way into the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to keep on working. We're going to keep on serving. We're going to keep on doing. Amen. As the uh, songwriters say, Christian, fight on. Your time ain't long. Amen. We know that the Lord is soon to return, and we're going to keep on working while it's day. Amen. And while we celebrate this great church, we can't celebrate this great church without celebrating our great leader. Come on, put your hands together for our pastor. Come on, you can do better than that. I want you to know that he, amen, uh, led the way, amen, in helping us to make sure that the air and all the other things and making sure that you feel comfortable, uh, these things don't just happen, amen. It happens because of leadership. It happens because there's someone pushing it, and we praise and thank God for the work of our pastor and the team, amen, who helped to make sure that all of these things are in place. And certainly we praise and thank God for you, for your giving. Amen. And once again, we extend to you an opportunity at this time to give in the house of the Lord. This is an opportunity for you to continue to sow into this great church, to continue to sow into 102 years of history, of fellowship, of, amen, of planting churches, of, amen, of, of doing global missions work. And, and, and uh, doing education and home mission and building churches all across the world. This is an opportunity for you to sow into this great ground. And so we want you at this time to prepare your hearts to give and your tithe and your offerings. And those of you who are listening via our live streaming, you can do so at this time. You can give on the Givelify app. The information is there in front of you. Or perhaps if you are here today, like many of us, you can give electronically. Man, you can go to the Givelify app and give to the Givelify app, or uh, you can give your tithe and your offerings through the envelopes. Our ushers uh, have envelopes that are uh, here before you. And so we're still being cautious, uh, and there are some things that we're slowly trying to reintroduce, but we want you to know that we do everything with you in mind. We do everything with you in mind, amen, keeping uh, your safety in our hearts with your offerings in your hand father in the name of jesus christ we thank you and we praise you we love and we adore you father we thank you for all that you have done and all that you are doing lord we ask that you now lord god would bless this offering we ask that you would bless the gift and we ask that you would bless the giver god we ask you to bless those lord god who will sow into this good ground Lord, we ask, Lord God, that you will return it a hundredfold, God. Lord God, if someone is in the need of a financial miracle, God, Lord God, we pray and believe that this is the seed, that this is the offering, Lord God, that will bring forth much fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Come on, lift those offerings high and say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Come on, let's make the devil angry. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our ushers and deacons are now serving for our offering. Just want to, uh, while they're doing that, uh, give you a few, just a few things that are uh, important. Uh, Sister Carol Griffith, missionary Carol Griffith, who has gone home to be with the Lord, her homegoing celebration will be this coming Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, uh, the 14th at the Unity Funeral Home on 126th Street. The viewing will begin at 10 a.m. and the service will begin promptly at 12 noon. We ask that you pray for the family of missionary uh, Griffith, that the Lord will strengthen them in this difficult hour. Uh, again, the homegoing service for missionary Griffith will be this coming Tuesday. Uh, the 14th at a.m. will be the viewing and at 12 noon will 
be the uh, homegoing celebration for our dear sister in Christ. We also want to acknowledge the fact that today is Grandparents Day. Amen. National Grandparents Day. Do I have any grandparents in the house? Now listen, that's a muzzle, that's a mask, not a muzzle. I couldn't hear anything. Amen. Do we have any grandparents in the house? Yes, all the grandparents. Look, look, Sister Betty's standing up tall. Amen. Proud, proud grandparent. Amen. Mother Wright and Mother Peterson, and Mother Davis. Look at Mother Anderson in the back standing. All of you. Amen. Sister Singleton, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God, Sister Spigna, all of the grandparents. Amen. Deacon uh, uh, Elder Davis. Amen. All of the grandparents. We celebrate you today. We want you to know that the Greater Refuge Temple celebrates those that are in the house and those, amen, who are with us live. If you are on with us live and you are grandparents, just simply type into the comment, I am a proud grandparent. Amen. Grandparents help tremendously. I don't know where I would, amen, where I would be if it wasn't for the help of my parents and my in-laws who help us with our three children. Amen. Down through the years, doing a tremendous job, and even still helping in whatever ways possible. Amen. Uh, yesterday morning, my daughter Madison woke up and said, I want to go to my mom and papa's house. Amen. And my father came and got her and took her over there uh, because she wanted to be with her grandparents. And what a wonderful thing to celebrate our grandparents. And we praise and thank God. For all of you grandparents, we celebrate you today. We honor you today for the great work that you have done and continue to do down through the years. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the word. Anybody ready for the word? Say, I'm ready for the word. Yes, yes, yes. At this time, we're going to have a selection coming to us from our praise and worship team. And the next voice you will hear after that will be that of our pastor, Bishop Charles Wright Sr. with our morning message, receiving our praise and worship team and our pastor as they come. Praise the Lord, everybody. The song says, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
and bless him. Hallelujah. 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 But we shall have ever that everlasting. For those that believe, we shall have everlasting. To them that believe, we
Praise the Lord, everyone. We greet you in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our God, who has blessed us to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, to worship and to praise him, we thank God for his goodness and grace unto us and for all of you who have come together as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We're so glad to see Mother Kennan with us this morning. Good to see you, Mother. The Lord blessed her and brought her back into the house of God, and we thank God for that. We're glad to see some of you. I won't call your names. The first time I've seen you, I think, in on a Sunday morning worship uh, since the pandemic. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the air conditioning system, the new air conditioning system. It's just coincidental that you show up on the day that the air is blowing on Sunday morning. Whatever reason it might be, thank God you're here. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Sister Carla Dickerson, it, it, it's not your first time, that's why, therefore I can say it. I can call your name. Good to see you again. Working with your husband uh, in the Bronx also. Thank God for you and for all of the Lord's wonderful children. God is good to us. And we can bless his name for all of his goodness unto us as we worship him today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear God, we come before you with thanksgiving. And we praise you. We thank you. Thank you for your presence in our midst and in our lives personally. Oh, bless us now. Make us a blessing. Speak to us. Hallelujah. Speak through us. Let your blood prevail. Hallelujah. Say to the Lord, rebuke you. The blood of Jesus Christ is against you. Hallelujah. Take your hand off God's children. Lord, your blood prevail against everything is not like you. Every contrary force. Hallelujah. We plead the blood against you in the name of Jesus. Thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. I want to call your attention this morning to the Word of God as found in the book of uh, 1 John. First Epistle of John, chapter 5. 1 John, chapter 5. Where we shall read, and by God's help, speak from this part of His Word. In the name of Jesus. First John chapter 5. And we'll begin reading at verse 13 and down and through the end of the chapter. First John 5 and 13. And the word of God reads on this wise. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. If any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. He that is begotten of God keepeth himself, that the wicked one toucheth him not. 
And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lies in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come. And has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and the eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. I want to speak to you today from this part of the Word of God, 1 John chapter 5, on the subject to provide assurance. To provide assurance. Uh, verse 13 is the key verse of this epistle. Uh, of chapter 5, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and yet you may believe on the name of the Son of God. To provide assurance, or you could say provide certainty or confidence. The Apostle John wrote this letter by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit uh, back around the middle of the last decade of the first century, around 95 uh, AD, John was inspired of the Lord to write unto the church. It's a general letter written not to any specific church, but to the church of Jesus Christ that was undergoing a certain degree of persecution and oppression during the 90s. During the reign of the cruel emperor Domitian, uh, they were suffering. Domitian was one of those Roman emperors who loved to be admired and even worshipped, demanding worship as a man. Oh, some of the Roman emperors and even ancient <coughs> rulers of the past uh, called themselves Lord and God and asked the people to worship him. And if you wouldn't worship, then you would meet certain opposition from him. Here, John is told to write to the Christians because they were intimidated. They had served God for a long time, but still, and in spite of that, there was oppression. And it wasn't just a matter of physical oppression. There was also psychological oppression as well as uh, uh, literary oppression. Things were written. Things were said by people to them and about them. They were not an appreciated uh, generation of Christians. Uh, anybody who's saved today might feel some of the same pressures, if not to the same degree. When people are putting you down because of your faith. And if you're not careful and prayerful, you will give in to some of this opposition and start feeling less than as you should feel as a child of God. And John, as he writes to them, wrote to provide assurance to the Christians. You need to know that you're saved. And you have to know that you know that you're saved. And some people might call it arrogance, but I call it faith. Uh, you need to know that you're saved. And one of the words he will use to describe that or talk about being saved is it talks about being born again. And that word being born of God or born again is used at least seven times by John to talk to the people of God. John writes uh, this letter, but it comes from the heart of God. And it's a letter, that's a dear letter written uh, by the father to his children. God, through John, is writing to us, and he calls them children, and that word children comes from the Greek word technia, and it means really little children, dear ones, letter written affectionately by God to us to tell us you don't have anything to worry about, everything is all right, hallelujah, uh, he wrote and one of the reasons he wrote was to add joy to them. Two, in 1 and 4 of uh, 1 John, he writes, And these things write me unto you that your joy 
may be full. Too many folks have the Holy Spirit, say they're born again, but not, they're not joyful enough about what they have. They just don't feel happy enough being saved. And that's a great danger. They start backing up, being ashamed, letting folks talk, and reacting to it negatively. If you know that you're saved, you ought to be happy that you're saved. You might not have everything you want, but I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah. Thank God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Born of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And John writes to them, and he uses a number of words and phrases to describe who they are and who they are. And he uses, and he cautions them in chapter 2 and verse 1, to guard against sin. My little children, these things write we un I unto you, that you sin not. If you're born of God, you're saved, you ought not to be sinning, practicing sin. And in that verse when he says he that's born of God does not commit sin, it's in the present tense. I mean, he that is born of God doesn't keep on sinning because his seed remains in him. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the living God is in him. You can't keep on sinning when you're born of God. There's an ethical and a moral requirement for a child of God can't be saved and live any kind of way. He that is born of God does not practice sin. He that is born of God does not practice sin. I'm not talking to you here in Refuge Temple or you that's watching us live stream and talking about somebody else that you need to talk to about the walk that they have. Hallelujah. John writes to them to tell them he that is born of God does not practice sin. He doesn't keep on sinning. And not only that, warn them against false teachers. In 2 and 26 of 1 John, the apostle writes, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. There were people that were out trying to seduce, trying to trick and trip up the people of God. They've always been enemies of, enemies of the cross of Christ. And, and, and we need to, as the choir sang, or the praise team sang, uh, be able to affirm the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 and 16 of Romans, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? It's the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believe it, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. It goes from faith to faith. One degree of faith to another degree of faith. There's growth in the continuous in God. Hallelujah. Thank God. In spite of the opposition, in spite of the trials, in spite of the critics, we're not ashamed. As Paul would say, I know in whom I have believed. Hallelujah. And I am fully persuaded. Anybody persuaded today? Hallelujah. Don't let the world push you into a corner. Hallelujah. John wrote unto them, and he wrote for them to stand up. And he uses a number of expressions, words, uh, to encourage them. He uses the word father 13 times in this short epistle of uh, five chapters. And then he uses the word children eight times, a term of endearment. John uses the word born seven times, or born of God, to keep before them the fact that you are different now, you're changed now. As the word of God will tell us, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, hallelujah, he that is born of God is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new. And the next verse, 18, and all things are of God. If you're changed, if you're born again, born brand new, you practice new things from what you used to practice before you were saved. There's a call to holiness along with us. We're not just filled with the Holy Spirit and that's it. No, there are requirements to walk a certain way, talk a certain talk, act a certain way if you're a child of God. Uh, COVID notwithstanding, we have no excuses to be lax because of a worldwide pandemic. Because we're born of God, right? He is born of God. He lives differently. Lives different from what he was when before he was saved. Things I used to do, the song says, I don't do them anymore, right? 
I'm newborn again. Newborn again. Bless my soul one morning. And he took away my sins. I'm newborn again. Anybody newborn again today in Murphy's Temple? Anybody newborn again out there watching us live stream? New creation. Hallelujah. That word uh, means I'm a new creation. I've been made new. There's a new man. Uh, I don't walk by the beat of the old drama, that Adamic nature. Uh, my inspiration comes from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the spirit of the living God that's on the inside. We need to expect people who are saved to be different from what they were when they were unsaved. We are to expect us individually to be different from what we were. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, but I know I'm not the same person I used to be 62 years ago. If I were, my wife would probably leave me. Uh, I wasn't born in the church like some of you, you know. Uh, thank God he saved me. New creation in Christ Jesus our Lord. And because of that, I can praise and thank God. Hallelujah. John wrote to provide assurance to the people of God. And we need assurance today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, if you are someone who loves God, then you love the people of God, right? The word love is used 53 times. You can't say you love God whom you've never seen. And hate your brother that you look at every day, right? Come on here now. Love for God is not just something that is vertical. It's horizontal. Uh, too many folks have their heads in the cloud, but you're on planet Earth. And your head in the cloud should show in your love and your care and your respect for God's children. Everybody who is saved ought to be the greatest lover in the world. Look what God, gosh, am I, uh, look where God brought you from. Look where he brought me from. Brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. You might have been a hooker. You might have been a dope addict. Might have been someone running numbers or whatever else it might be, homonger. It doesn't matter. Might have been gay. But you're saved if you have been born again. You're different now. If any man's in Christ, new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. You are new because you're saved. Don't say we are hard on you. Don't say that we are asking too much. We are asking only what God asks. And anything that we ask of you is what is incumbent upon us. He that preaches love must be a lover himself. Hallelujah. Yeah, it starts with the pulpit. And it goes to the back door. Hallelujah. If you're saved and sanctified, God has changed your life. Live like it. As Paul says in Galatians, I believe it is 5 and 25. If you live in the spirit, walk in the spirit. In other words, if you're saved, act like you're saved. Yes? Preaching hard now, right? <laughs> Might be tight, but it's right. We have no excuse because we're born of God. Whatever God, hallelujah, asks of us, he blesses us to be able to do it. Hallelujah. Uh, whom God calls, God equips. If he saved you, he gave you power. Jesus said on the Mount Hallelujah before, before he uh, ascended into heaven. Acts 1 and 8, they wanted to talk about a kingdom. Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Dunamis, energy, strength, enablement. God enables us. Stop having a pity party. Stop making excuses for yourself or anyone else. If you claim the Holy Spirit, you claim to be born of God. He said, whatsoever, whosoever is born of God, he overcomes the world. We are overcomers. We are overcomers. And we will be overcomers. Oh, you're listening, Refuge Simple. We are overcomers. If you're born of God, uh, 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. No demon in hell can stop a child of God. Ah, stand up. Stand up, O child of God. 
Stand tall with your shoulders square. Stand with your face in the wind. For God I live. And for God I'll die. Thank God for power in the Holy Spirit. Hamamayasha. Yay, hallelujah. Eka Shamaya. John was writing to them to give them assurance. Give them confidence as a child of God. Too many folks are making excuses for themselves and others. Too many folks have low expectations. But I have high expectations. In spite of what's going on, you're still saved, right? Doesn't the Apostle John say in 1 John chapter 3, Behold, what manner of love. Behold, look with amazement upon it. That the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Or children of God, right? Look at you. Look at me. You know where you came from. I know where I came from. Uh, somebody who didn't know what end was up. But Jesus blessed and saved me. Look with amazement. That hallelujah, the former life. And look at you now. If you can't look with amazement, uh, something's wrong. Uh, none of us was born in the church. None of us was born but the Holy Spirit. It's the, an act of God, an act of love. God so loved the world. Gave his only begotten son that whoso believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And the power of his son and the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, enables us to walk with pride and with dignity. Not with human pride and arrogance, but with dignity as a child of God. I'm glad I don't have to have a drink before I go out. Hallelujah. There were years ago when you couldn't go to a party without getting high. You got to feel your liquor and so forth. But thank God, right? I don't need that now. Number one, I don't go to those parties. Hallelujah. We're having a party on Sunday morning. Uh, rejoicing in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So John wants to provide assurance. You say, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the children of God. Hallelujah. Insignificant creatures uh, looked down upon, but God saved us. Hallelujah. It's love with amazement. Great love that God bestowed upon us. Loved by the Father. Uh, I'm the king's kid. They might say, well... You know, I was talking to someone from my hometown of South Carolina, from Orangeburg, uh, not too long ago. And he told me, he said, yes, you, you, you used to live across the tracks. You know, the, the tracks were always an identifying thing when it came to communities, right? On this side of the track, you're all right. West side, they claim. I lived on the east side. Not that we were bad, but you were looked down upon, hallelujah. It's just like Philip told us, and you come see a man that's a uh, hallelujah, told me everything I ever did. No, that's the woman at the well. Come see someone, hallelujah, Jesus of Nazareth. And they tell you, say, couldn't any good thing come out of uh, uh, Nazareth? Nazareth didn't have the best name. You know, it was up there, well, it had a lot of Gentiles, and it had Gentile images up there in Nazareth, though it was in the Holy Land. Uh, but he said, come on and see. I thank God that I met Jesus one day. And it doesn't matter what side of the track I came from. He made things different. He made me feel different. He made a change in my life from a high school dropout to someone who went to graduate school. And I'm not bragging. It's a testimony. If you've got trouble with my testimony, that's your problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, from a high school dropout to a graduate of Columbia University. Master of Arts, hallelujah, and uh, did it come loudly. Thank God for what God can turn your life around. You ought to be able to see changes in your life because you're saved. I'm not what I used to be, and I'll stand and tell it, hallelujah. Tell it on the mountaintop, tell it on Fifth Avenue. I will tell it on the steps at St. Patrick's, it doesn't matter. Saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. Uh, by the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it's because he has put his spirit within us. Hallelujah. Uh, the apostle will use the word no at least 39 times in this five chapters of 1 John 5. Five chapters of 1 John 5. 
39 times he'll use the word no or one of his cognates. There were certain things you know. It was so in Kierkegaard, who was an existentialist, who said that faith was a leap in the dark. Faith is no leap in the dark. You, when you have faith in God, he that comes to God must believe what? That he is? And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, right? When I talk to Jesus Christ, I expect him to answer me, right? Doesn't the apostle John say also regarding that? That if we talk to God, uh, if we ask a prayer of God, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we know we have the petition we desire of him. Are you listening? We know it. That word no, there are two prominent Greek words that he will use. One is oida, which is a word that means we have total and complete faith in God Almighty. I believe that it will happen just like I said. God will do it. There's another word, gnosko. It's a word that means uh, you learn as you go along. Hallelujah, ain't nothing wrong with that. Because the apostle, rather the book of uh, Hosea said, then shall we know. As we follow on to know the Lord, progressive faith, right? Faith that grows, right? As Paul said in Romans 1, from faith to faith, one degree of faith to another degree of faith. We should be growing towards spiritual maturity as a child of God. We will never be mature on this side of hallelujah, the rapture, as we'll be then. But thank God I can feel growth. I can feel strength. Things I used to do, I don't do anymore, right? Uh, I know it's a change in my life. I know I've been changed, Sister Whitehead used to say, right? I know I've been changed. The angels in the heavens done signed my name, signed and sealed by God Almighty. Hallelujah. As the prophet Isaiah would say, and it shall be said that this man was born there. It's not your association with the church in and of itself, but you're born again. It's an experience I had. Hallelujah. It might have been in church, but the church didn't do it. Jesus did it. Uh, when he filled me with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, thank God. And it helps to give me assurance. It helps to give me confidence. It helps to give me, hallelujah, certainty. And I can say, I know. And Gnosko, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt I'm saved. All I have to look back and see my life, hallelujah, uh, back in 1959 before I was saved, hallelujah. On that day, Labor Day, 1959, I bought me a bottle of vodka. I was going to get high and go to Coney Island. Never got to Coney Island. Never drank that vodka. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that made me pour it down the sink. It's change. Change. Oh, do you don't need any vodka anymore. Don't need anything to help me feel good enough to go out and talk to folk. Thank God it's the power of the Holy Spirit. And John writes to them to say, I want you to have assurance. I want you to know that you're saved. I want you to know, to know that the power you have of God can help you to live no matter what goes on. No matter how they criticize you. No matter how they talk about you. It's the power of the Holy Ghost in your life that makes all the difference, right? Uh, he spoke to them. And there are too many, even Christians, folks who go to church who don't have enough faith. Hallelujah. Uh, they say, I think I can do it. If you say so, pastor, it, it doesn't matter who says so. You ought to know that you're saved. You ought to know that you're saved. As uh, it was in the book of Romans, the apostle Paul, uh, because you're saved, you sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, whereby you cry, Abba, Father, right? Uh, you are a child of God. That word Abba is an untranslated uh, word from the Aramaic. Hallelujah. Which means, hallelujah, that we have been saved. We have been changed. And he called him Daddy. Not just Father. It was something that the Greeks wouldn't do when it came to God. Uh, a Jews, rather, wouldn't do when it came to God. But we call him Abba, Father. It's the Holy Ghost that prompts us to say, Daddy. He's my Daddy. Hallelujah. Uh, who's your Father. Jesus Christ is my Lord, my God, and my Father. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. 
It's the power of God to salvation. To everyone that believeth. Not to one who is trying to practice the law and obey all of the commandments. It's the one who has faith in God. All it takes is faith in God. Church, all it takes is faith in God. Tell them thank you. Tell them thank you. Uh, the people at the time, because of the criticism that they were receiving by those who were not Christians, some of them were Gnostics that were G-N-O-S-T-I-C as Gnostics. Uh, they, they, they believed that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God. They believed in a system and a belief where God did not touch matter, come into contact with matter. If God came into contact with materiality, corporeality, he would be affected. My God is in the world, but not affected by the world. Uh, and all that's in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life, and it's not of God. So Serenthus said to them, hallelujah, you need to stop believing in Jesus Christ. And because, number one, he could not be the son of God because he was material. He was born of Mary. And John said, yes, that which was from the beginning which we've seen, we looked upon in our hands of Hannah, chapter 1. Hallelujah, we declare unto you, we are talking about Jesus Christ. Mary's baby, hallelujah, but not Joseph's son. That makes a big difference, hallelujah. Because he was born of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and she became pregnant with Jesus. Uh, and you know that the unborn child receives the blood and the life that comes with it from the Father, right? That's why Jesus Christ had to be virgin born. There were some who called themselves Christians and who believed that Jesus Christ was not virgin born. If Jesus Christ was not born of the virgin and had a human father, he would not be the son of God. He would not be God. He would not have been an acceptable sacrifice. But thank God, it's the Holy Ghost that calls Mary to be with child. That which is born of her, hallelujah, is born sinless. That's why he's a perfect sacrifice. That's why he could offer his blood sinlessly, hallelujah, on the cross of Calvary. That's why he is the propitiation for our sins. That word propitiation from the Greek word halasmos, meaning that he is the one that causes God to be friendly and disposed towards us. God doesn't have to look upon us, hallelujah, with anger and wrath, but God can look upon us favorably because we have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why it is important for us to be assured that Jesus Christ Born of the Virgin Mary, but sinlessly so. Uh, conceived of the Holy Ghost, yes. Died upon the cross of Calvary as a sinless sacrifice for our sins. And because of that, I can stand tall today. Stand with, uh, with my head high. Stand, hallelujah, my face in the winds of time. Stand and say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God to salvation. Tell God, thank you. Tell him, thank you. Hallelujah. We are born of the Holy Ghost. That's why it's important to have the Holy Ghost. Those folks say, oh, that ain't necessary. It is necessary. And John, Paul would say in Romans 8, if any man doesn't have the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. You don't belong to him. You got to have him to be his child. He sends forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. And here we have the talking about the Holy Ghost and we're talking about the Spirit of the Son. The Son and the Holy Ghost are the same. The Son and the Holy Ghost are the same as the Father. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all. He's above all and it's through us all who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Glad I'm saved. Glad I'm saved the old-fashioned way. Hallelujah. I'm glad. And I thank God for the assurance that the Holy Ghost gives me, hallelujah. I'm glad again I say I'm saved. Proud to be a child of God. Proud to be an apostolic. We have too many folks today in the church who used to be apostolics. As one elder said, I'm a functional Trinitarian. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a functional apostolic. There's nothing wrong with that. It works. <laughs> Yeah, right in the bound. I'm saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. Thank God I got God in my life and I'm running for my life. We've made tremendous progress in the church. 
even in the apostolic church, we've made tremendous progress. Hallelujah. And because of progress and upward mobility on the part of some, they're moving away from the old-fashioned apostolic message. Progress is one thing. But any progress that causes you to lay the Holy Ghost down, there's something wrong with that. I think that's a backward movement. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, it's a wonderful thing to go to school and get an education. But let, don't let it get to the point that it causes you to not believe in God. You got the wrong thing. I thank God I wasn't going to Columbia University to try to find Jesus. I was already saved. Uh, when I went to the seminary, I wasn't looking for Jesus. I had found Jesus before the seminary. Because if you don't have Jesus Christ before you go to some seminaries, you come out different than you went in there. It is said of Martin Luther King Jr. was a good man, a good social reformer. But the, the man that wrote the book, uh, Search for the Beloved City, a book about Martin Luther King Jr., he said Martin went into Boston U uh, University for his doctorate, but when he came out, it's a question as to whether or not he believed in a heaven and hell. You don't need an education that's going to turn you away from God. Hallelujah. Need something that will enable, you and help, enable and help you become a strong child of God. Thank God. If you really have it like the Bible says, you can go to school and come out different. Hallelujah. You might have to work a little harder. You have to believe a little more. But thank God you can come out saved. And I thank God I'm saved and I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and I'm fire baptized. I got God in my life and I'm running for my life. Hallelujah. And as John would say in 1 John chapter 3, Behold, what man of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should become the sons of God. And the world knows us not. Why? Because it didn't know him. Because it didn't know him. That's, how, That's why the world doesn't understand you. You're in church. You've been going to church on all this summer. Coming to a hot church without air conditioning. Hallelujah. Shouting in your beautiful Sunday dress. Because you love God, right? The world can't understand it. He changed my life. Why should I not love him? Hallelujah. Uh, as it was when Polycarp the martyr said regarding Jesus Christ. They tried to get Polycarp to change his mind and deny Jesus Christ. And uh, toss some incense before the emperor's statue who was demanding worship. Polycarp said, how can I deny him, my Lord and my Christ? Eighty and six years I've served him. He has done me no wrong. God has been good to you, hasn't he? He hasn't done you anything wrong. He has enabled you. He's made you better. How many feel like they're better today than they were when, before they got saved? Thank God I'm changed. I'm proud to be an apostolic Christian. Proud to be a member of Greater Bethpage Temple. I know some folks have trouble with that. Uh, but I'm glad I'm saved. This is the way I met Jesus. Proud of the ministry of the apostolic church. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Who's above all, is through all, he's in us all. Thank God I have the Holy Spirit, not just some cute expression like some people say, I'm born again. Yes, I'm born again. Thank God. Uh, the initial physical sign of the presence of God in my life, I spoke with tongues as the Holy Ghost gave utterance. Thank God I'm saved. Anybody saved like that today? I am still saved. Still speak with tongues. Uh, thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for this way of life. Hallelujah. Some people today, they have the Holy Spirit, but they are like a cut flower generation of Christians. You know, cut flower, they uh, are like flowers that are cut in the garden, placed inside of some container and brought inside, and they're different. In Ezekiel chapter 37, there is a, an analogy of Israel. Uh, when the prophet, hallelujah, Ezekiel was so, Ezekiel, uh, I want you to go and look over here. And Ezekiel went and he looked in the valley. And in the valley, there were a whole a lot of things in the valley. And the word was about those in the valley, uh, they can't live. They will never live. So Ezekiel was taken by the hand of the Lord spiritually, carried into a great valley. And in, in the valley, there were a whole lot of bones. The valley was full of bones. Bones. And, uh, and the Lord asked him, 
Ezekiel, can these bones live? And he said, Lord, you know. And, 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 and the Lord told him, speak to the bones. Speak the word. Prophesy unto them. Uh, tell them, oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. To a world of dry bones, a world that has no spiritual life in it, preach the word. Teach the word. Share the word. Uh, I know a lot of folks said that's old-fashioned Bishop Bright, but I'm sorry about it. It's the truth. Ah, uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 119, Hallelujah, 130, the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. It's the word of God that makes the difference. Hebrews 4 and 12, uh, regarding the word of God, the word of God is quick, that means alive. It's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing the son of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. And the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and of the intents of the heart. It's God's word. It gets down like and deeper than a laser would get. A laser can cut you and you don't see any blood. Well, the word can cut you and convict you, hallelujah, and change your life. Like on the day of Pentecost when Peter preached the word of God to them, uh, they were cut to their heart. Uh, laid bare. The word brought them back to the errors of their time and the sinfulness of their ways. And they cried out, men and brothers, what must we do? It's the word of God that makes the difference today. Preach it, preachers. Teach it, people. Uh, share the word. And the word will cause many women to cry out, what must I do? Nothing gives us awareness of who we are like the word of God. It's like Saul. Before he became Paul, was on his way to Damascus. Riding along with him, and he had some soldiers with him going to arrest the Christians. But what happened? The Lord arrested Saul. Called out from heaven, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the bricks. It is hard for you, hallelujah, to fight against God. The more you fight, the more you lose. Saul was knocked to the ground, speechless and blind. And he called out unto the Lord and said unto him, Lord, who art thou? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. You go into the city of Damascus, and there'll be a man there who will tell you what you must do. God had spoken to Ananias that he would talk to Saul and help him receive his sight and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Saul was a very, very uh, educated and powerful rabbi there working for the Sanhedrin. But God stopped him on the way to Damascus. It was the word of God that made the difference. The word that he had studied, but God turned his mind around and helped him to see what was right in what he was reading and that he thought was wrong with the Christians. And he became one of the greatest apostles of all time, the apostle to the Gentiles, because God turned him around. He needed assurance about God's word that he had read. He needed an understanding about what he had read. So it is with the child of God today. Uh, we have John writing and saying that you might have assurance. Too many folks don't believe like they should believe. Don't blame it on COVID. Some folks are saying, well, I haven't been able to get to church like I should have. Well, we've been here for a long time. And it's not only that. It's the Holy Ghost that makes a difference, right? It's the Holy Ghost that saves. It's the Holy Ghost that causes us to be born again, right? And because of the Holy Spirit, we're saved and sanctified, kept in spite of COVID. COVID notwithstanding, we stand today. Stand as a child of God. Stand tall. Stand with your faith intact. Ah, he wants to provide assurance to the people of God. You have no excuse to go back. Yes, the uh, mission might dem demand worship of you. You don't have to worship him. Stand like John did. John was ban banished to the hour that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes, standing as a child of God doesn't mean that everybody will like you and the devil will never like you. Don't you believe that? The devil will never like you. If he tells you, I love you, you're a nice guy, you're a nice girl, it's a lie. It's some surreptitious means of his to try to get to you and change you. He never speaks good. And what good he speaks, he mixes it with evil, like when you talk to Eve, right? Watch it, oh child of God. 
John wrote to provide assurance to them about what they had, and he told them to stand tall as a child of God. Trying to hurry on, see the time running away from me. So John says, we are overcomers as children of God. And the Lord has blessed us to know that we are saved. You need to know you're saved. You need to stop guessing and saying, I, I suppose so. No, be strong in the Lord and be strong in the power of his might, the apostle John would say. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. No demon in hell can stop a child of God. How many believe that today? No demon in hell. Nobody can stop you. It's not because of you. It's because of who is, it's because of who is in you. It's the Holy Ghost that you have. Power of the living God that makes you strong enough to stand in a test. Don't say, I haven't been saved long enough. I haven't been saved. And a missionary like Sister Peterson. No, don't say that. Hallelujah. You, you're saved if you're saved one day. And the Holy Ghost in you is the same as the Holy Ghost that kept Sister Peterson for 61 years. There is no diminution of the Holy Spirit's power. The Holy Ghost is the same wherever he is, and he's worldwide. He's omnipresent. The Holy Ghost is the same in all of us. It's the same in the pew as he is in the pulpit. For God is thoroughly equipoised. Boy, God is balanced in all of his attributes. God is too strong. He is not weak in any area of his life or his being or his attributes. Hallelujah. God is not too mushy that he will ignore, hallelujah, his word. He will save you according to his word. Uh, and, and, and you who, who feel that, well, I haven't been saved long, it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, I say again. The Holy Ghost is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And hallelujah, if you stand as a child of God, God will stand with you. You don't have to go back. As Paul said, what shall? Separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. What or who? Nobody can stop you. Whom he foreknew he did predestinate. God knew you beforehand, hallelujah, before you came to hallelujah to refuge temple. Uh, whom he foreknew he did predestinate. Whom he knew beforehand, he did determine this person is going to be saved. And that's before you were born, before your parents came together. Before there was a wind aware, before there was a dinner there, before the echoes walked the aisles of solitude, before the zigzag lightning played against across the universe, before the muttering thunder rolled, before the chimney was laid in Zion. God knew you. Ah, he is eternal. And his plan and his purposes are eternal. In time, he called us. He saved us, sanctified us, justified us. And because you're God's child, according to God's eternal plan, you are more than a victor. We are overcomers, every one of us. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Oh, it's a settled fact in my heart, and I trust in your heart that I'm saved and I'm sanctified. You ought to know that you're saved. I know some people will say, well, you know, Bishop Wright, uh, uh, there's some dry days, some, some uh, days when you don't feel him. I mean, I don't feel the same every day, but there's no such thing as a dry spell that God gives. I know it's a very popular Pentecostal expression. Uh, your, 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 your spell is wrong because you won't seek God. Like in the valley of dry bones. Can these bones live? Hear the word of the Lord. There's something about the word you don't want to hear. You, you, you don't like that because you don't like the person who said it. Who does he think he is? I didn't call myself. God called me. God called me and told me to preach the word. And I've got to preach. But the word has life. Uh, the word has life. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. If God's words give light, it gives understanding. Helps us to know. Then it's more the word we should have, right? More about Jesus Christ of the Lord. So Ezekiel was told to preach. And as Ezekiel preached to the dry bones in the valley, the bones started getting together, right? Yeah. Sinews started being laid over the bones. Uh, there was a rattling in the valley. If we preach more word, preachers, people would live more. Uh, 
that Paul was told to Timothy. And as Peter said in 1 Peter 5, feed the flock of God that's among you, right? Taking the oversight thereof, not with constraint, not being dogmatic when it comes to controlling people's lives. Because John also wrote to a man in the, the third epistle of John who was named Diotrephes. Diotrephes loved to have the preeminence among the people. You know, you got some preachers, not here in Refuge Temple. They got to be it. They got to be in charge. It ain't going to work unless I say it works. Diotrephes, spirit of diotrephes. And, and, and they, they are controlling preachers, controlling members. President of the XYZ Club. But she controls it like it's hers. Hallelujah. John tells us we are children of God. And the world didn't understand it because they didn't know Jesus Christ of the Lord. So Ezekiel preached and the bones started getting together. Hallelujah. One of the reasons why we don't get the depth of that parable in Ezekiel 37 of the dry bones is because we see the dry bones are people who don't shout very much. Who are not very loud in the church. But it has nothing to do with the church. Well, the church was not even seen in the Old Testament time. And certainly Ezekiel was not talking about the church. Or the conduct of the church. He was talking about Israel and he said, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They are cut off from their parts. Cut off from the source of life because the word of God was not too strong in that day. They were backslidden when the prophet talked to them about what they were doing. And Jeremiah at the same time, they said, we're going to do what we want to do. Because when we started listening to you. We didn't have what we used to have. We were going to bake our cakes to the queen of heaven. Uh, worshiping the, the heavenly bodies. And not only that, they were worshiping the holy, uh, Simon Ramesses person also. Uh, going back to Nero, uh, Nimrod's time and the paganness of the time. And those cakes, probably like the cakes that some church groups bake at Easter time. Paganism brought into the church. Are oh, you listening? We'll say more about that some other time. But here, they, they didn't listen to the word of the Lord. But when Ezekiel started preaching, uh, bones came together. Sinews came upon the bone. Life came into the body. Or uh, rustling in the valley of dry bones. There will be movement with the word. If folks would listen to the word. And first the preachers would preach the word. And stop preaching about themselves and their power and the authority that they have. Preach the word. The entrance of God's word gives light, gives understanding to the simple. For young folks, the entrance of your word, hallelujah, uh, it, it gives light also. Uh, understanding to the simple, it gives life for the young as well. Everybody who hears the word, if they would give an ear to the word, John said, let them that hath an ear, let them hear what the word says. And that word here from the Hebrew word shema, which means to listen, to pay attention with the intent to or do what the word says. If you have the right heart and the right mind, young or old, rich or poor, the word will have its desired effect. You can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. But it's got to be by the word of God. Are you listening? Hallelujah. We know it's a settled opinion. It's a settled fact. We know, John says, that the Son of God has come. Some folks are questioning whether Jesus Christ came into the world or not. Uh, some instances are saying he didn't come because he couldn't come because God couldn't, uh, hallelujah, be in f fellowship with him. Uh, if he did come into the world because he was born of Joseph, no, he was born of Mary, fathered by the Holy Spirit. And John said, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that we also may have fellowship with the with us, you may, you may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things write be unto you that your joy may be full. You're going to be happier as you follow the word. You're going to be happier if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. John said, we've seen him, we've heard him, we've looked upon him. Our hands have handled him of the word of life. Just in the, like in the case of Thomas after his resurrection, they thought he might have been a spirit. Jesus said, reach forth your hand, Thomas. Put it into print in my hand. Reach forth your hand, Thomas. Put it into print in my side. Be not faithless, but believing. 
It's the word of God that makes all the difference in the world. But it's got to be preached. Don't be ashamed to share at Refuge Temple. Don't be ashamed of the word of God. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the power of God unto salvation to all who would believe. And it goes from faith to faith. It begins with faith and it keeps progressing as faith is exercised. Contrary to what Soren Kierkegaard said, the existentialist, hallelujah, it's no leap in the dark. Christianity is a knowing religion. We know that the Son of God has come. He has given us an understanding. And we are in him that is true. This is the true God. This is eternal life. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. No matter who comes your way, no matter who opposes, uh, the passing of our pastor, Bishop Bonner, and of our founder, Bishop Lawson, didn't mean the end of Greater Refuge Temple. It didn't mean the end of the word. As long as I have breath, by God's help, I'm going to preach it. And I believe that there will be people who would want to listen. Don't be ashamed. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God and the salvation to everyone believed, to those Jew first and then also to the Greek. In it, the Greek is the power of God and the salvation. Anyone say, not saved today who wants to have strength and help and grace from God, you can be saved. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. As it talks about the potter, right? The book of Jeremiah talks about the potter. The potter is able to put you back together again. You used to be a stronger child of God. Now you're not as strong as you used to be. Come on back home. Come on back home. Use no excuses of illness or pandemic or anything. Come on back home. Be strengthened. Be proud. Walk with pride as an apostolic Christian. In the name of anyone for Christ. Bless you. If you know the need, answer the call. Jesus said, come unto me, all who labor in a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I'm meek and I'm lowly in heart. You'll find rest for your soul. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. The word is to provide assurance. Confidence building. Even in prayer. Confidence building, right? Every prayer will find an answer. For the word of God is true. You might not get what you want, but you'll get an answer. God's no, the old folks would say, is just as sweet as is yes is in the will of God everlasting life
our confidence and our faith in God Almighty. And remember, Christianity is not a leap in the dark. We know where we are going. Hallelujah. The way has been made plain. Let us all stand as we prepare for to, to receive our benediction, holding our hands under God. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us until we meet again through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray hallelujah amen and amen God bless you